Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Mile Monday with Brittany and Carice. We're super excited to be here with you all again. So welcome. Today, <laughs> like, is she going to have a reaction? I don't know. Let me wait for it. Um, it's very early, guys. It's, it's eight o'clock in the morning. Literally, we keep doing these early and earlier because our schedules are so busy. But we love to do this for you guys. So we're excited today to talk about top tips for the new myofunctional therapist because everybody always has questions, right? You finish your first intro course, like, I'm going to think I'm in your shoes. What do I want to know? Um, Chris, do you want to start us off? Well, first things first, you got to just dive in, like start seeing patients. I can't imagine going through hygiene school, having never seen anybody. And then, you know, somebody putting me in a dental office being like, okay, now every 45 minutes, you have a patient, make sure you get them done. So yes, you're going to need to work on friends, work on family, work on your own children, like start getting in there. You won't feel comfortable with the exercises mm -hmm. until you start doing them. You won't feel comfortable, you know, looking at a tongue tie or looking at function or oral function until you start really doing it day in and day out where you can do it. Make sure you're doing it. If you are in an office and you're already seeing patients as a hygienist, start looking at tongues, start looking at feeling masseters, start, you know, yes. getting everything I always laugh, everybody. I feel like one of the common things I always get from people is how do I know what prominent rugae look like? Well, you're looking at them and then you're going to know what's prominent versus not prominent. What's in with the normal limits versus not. The more hands-on you get, the more experience you can get, the more you're going to be able to tell the difference. And, you know, working on yourself, I think everybody should master all the exercises first on themselves, because how are you ever going to teach somebody exercises when you can't do them yourself? And sometimes that even means for some of our therapists having to get your tongue released. If you have a tongue tie, are you going to be able to take somebody from start to finish if you can't really do the exercises yourself? So do an evaluation on yourself, get yourself in, you know, with an airway dentist, release provider, um, what have you. I think that that's a really great starting position is working on them yourself, because you'll know, what did you have difficulty with? What was, you know, what little tips and tricks did you give yourself to be able to make the exercise easier? And then you can pass that on to your patients. Yes. And what I love about our team Mayo course is that we get them started while they're in the course. Cause just like I said, I wouldn't have liked being in a hygiene school and have never seen a patient. Like you can't yeah. just didactic learning. You've got to get some clinical experience in there. And so I, I love that we do that because it gets you started on the right foot. Yeah. And I think, you know, I always say to everybody, think about how you felt even, okay, you're in clinical, you're in hygiene, you're seeing your, how many kids, adults, perio patients, what have you, you get your first job in whatever setting you're in private practice, community, whatever. How do you feel? Do you feel like you're 120% prepared? Nope. No, right. It's normal to feel that way. It's new. It's new. And you know, a lot of us have been hygienists for 10 plus years. I mean, we can literally probably scale to you with our eyes closed at this point. So the idea of doing something new can be a little bit scary, but you can do it. And at the end of the day, you have all these tools, you have all this knowledge, the patients that are coming into you, they don't, they don't know everything that's going to be on your evaluation. So if you happen to miss taking a picture of something the first time, it is okay. Your treatment plan will not be ruined. You can get it the next time. Okay. It's not a big deal. Stay calm, stay confident, which is going to be your next thing we're going to talk about. And you guys got this. So that brings us on to our next tip. You have to be confident. Mindset is literally everything. You are now the specialist, right? You're putting that myofunctional therapy hat on. You are the specialist, you know, so often in, you know, private practice or whatever, you know, setting you guys are in, there seems to be this underlying hierarchy between the dentist and the hygienist. And that's not the case. I mean, really, first of all, we should always all be on the same level, right? Cause we're a team and we can't get through things without one another, but especially as a therapist, like you are up there with that periodontal specialist, that root canal specialist, whoever, you are the specialist. People are coming to you for services that you know, you are valuable and you have to remember that. 
Absolutely. And what's important is that it's collaborative care. So you're working with these providers. You have to feel like you are that specialist because they're going to ask you questions that are specific to that case. You're going to have to relay information to them um, just as any other specialist who would be communicating with a provider would. So consider yourself equal as an equal person on the team because that's what you are. You're all providing an essential service that's going to help that patient get to optimal oral function, optimal sleep, optimal airway, whatever your goals are. Chris, do you remember like your, like your, I don't know if you want to call it an, an aha moment, but like, like I remember the exact time where like that mindset set in for me, where I was like, oh, wow, like I'm the specialist. I'm the one that knows these things. They don't. <laughs> I think it was the first time somebody told me that somebody was like, oh, you know, I'm so happy you could come in for this lunch and learn today because, you know, you're the specialist, like, you, you know what this stuff is about and I can't wait to learn from you. And I was like, what? I'm a what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, for me, I remember it. I was driving to, I had met this orthodontist. He was super, super great. And he's like, I want you to meet my partner. I want you to meet my oral surgeon. I want you to meet general dentists that we work with. And he planned this dinner for us. And we went to this nice, nice, nice dinner and I'm driving there. And you know me, I have conversations with myself all the time. So I'm literally driving and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. What am I going to do? What if I don't know the answer? Ah, uh, oh my God. I don't know. Should I turn around? And then it was like, literally it was like this switch. And I was like, I'm the specialist. <laughs> I can do this. They are coming to me to learn more about the services I can provide to their patients to enhance their treatment plans. They don't know this stuff. And if, and if I don't know the answer to a question, which I didn't that night, I knew all the answers. So go me. But if I didn't, it has happened before. You simply just say, I'm going to look into that and I will get back to you. You don't yes. think that Dr. Jones and Dr. Whoever has ha had to do that before. You, you don't need to know everything right at this exact moment, especially because in this field, everything is ever changing. Yeah, you'll never know everything and everything that you think you know, you actually know nothing about. <laughs> don't you love that? It's like grass. Yeah. <laughs> But Absolutely. yeah, and I would say that getting to that point, it takes a lot of, you know, steps. And so I think another thing that it's important to talk about is goal setting. And I think you do a wonderful lecture on that. Um, you do a great one and it's in our, our out of the op group on Facebook, but there's also one that we do in our team Mayo course, but Brittany, you are phenomenal when it comes to talking about goal setting. So let us know your top tips. Yeah. I mean, this is like no joke. So I don't know how you guys all feel, but for me, like I need to make, I have sticky notes everywhere and I need to make a list for myself and the satisfaction it brings me when I accomplish something and I can take my pen and cross it out. Nothing makes me feel better. But what I suggest is making, so you, you just finished this course, right? You have all this stuff, like, oh my God, it seems like doom and gloom. Like I have to what's best for me, an LLC, a sole proprietorship, like what, what do I have to do? I have to talk to a lawyer. I have to set up a bank account. I have to get a website to go on social media. I have to buy this. I have to do that. It's like this ever literally long list of things to do. And anybody in their right mind would be completely overwhelmed with that because it's a lot. Our brains as hygienists, most of us at least aren't geared towards that. So it is definitely a mindset shift. So I'm a big believer in setting goals. So let's say, let's just talk about website development. That is super overwhelming for some people. Uh, completely understood. Break it down into smaller goals. By the end of this week, I'm going to have written my about me page and the services page. Awesome. What are you going to do next week? What's your maybe two months is your overall goal to get the entire website done, launched. There you go. So you want to sh set, I'm sorry, uh, short-term goals and long-term goals. Long-term goals can be five years, a year, six months. Short-term goals can be daily, weekly. Um, I'm a big believer in that. Break it down into smaller goals for yourself because it's going to keep you motivated. The more that you can accomplish to reach your overall goal, you're just going to, you're going to keep going. That momentum is just going to keep you going. Absolutely. I love that. And I'm like a big proponent of sticky notes. I literally have sticky notes all over. <laughs> and 
and they're everywhere too. And I do love also like one being able to rip them off the wall. Like, yes, I did that. So now it's gone. I don't need yeah. this anymore. And so it's one less thing, but then I put like three more sticky notes up because there's other things to do. So yeah, yeah. I'm huge proponent of goal setting. Yeah. I mean, something, I think it helps keep you accountable too, like seeing it literally written out. And we have, like Chris said, a whole week on um, goal setting, on business plan development. Like it doesn't have to be this super duper hard thing, right? You got to just, you, you got to knock it out little by little. And we will help walk you through that, um, you know, because we've done it and we've done it maybe at least for me, a little bit of a harder way right? But we live and we learn. So now I can share with you my experience and how we can take that really long road into a much shorter road. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, one of the things I was asked the other day is, you know, what is it that I did when I first started to get my plan together and like how I was going to work with patients and what exercises I was going to use. And so I had a weird answer. It, like it took me forever in a day, but here's why I confused <laughs> myself with like a whole bunch of stuff. So my very first class was an IAOM class. And then after that, literally the next weekend. So I took a four day, was it three or four days? Whatever. I think it was four days. And then cool. the next weekend I did restorative breathing with Lois Laney. And then the next weekend I did voice gym. So at that point in time, I had got exercises from everywhere, all different directions. It's like cranial nerves. It's dealing with voice and the vocal cords and whatever. And I'm like, how do I mix all this together? Well, you know how you mix it all together? Confuse yourself even more, like do some AOMT class and then go back and do a uh, myo mentor with Sarah Hornsby and like, then do, um, breath mastery with Dan Brule. Like I confused myself entirely. (laughs) Like within the first six months, I had all those courses that I was like trying to cram into my brain. And so what I would say, honestly, is that one, I didn't need the extra Mayo courses. Like I literally got not very much out of taking them. I didn't use any of the additional exercises from them. What I did do though, was I really amplified what I already had my existing, my own knowledge with those modalities. So my First number tip. one, my, <laughs> yeah, super bonus tip, right? Is that Oh yeah. This is our bonus. We already did three bonus Look at us guys bringing you the bonuses. <laughs> Yes. So my bonus tip is to take a modality after you've done your intro course. Don't worry about, oh my gosh, I need to take another course from like such and such a person because so-and-so said that they were great. Like they may be great. They may very well be great. And I'm certain almost all of the people who teach courses now do lecture and they lecture in other places. So I'm certain you can hear from them in some other way, shape or form other than paying that money for another class. What I would say is to get into a modality, like start learning how you can do reflex integration or cranial nerve integration or deal with breath and, you know, do buteco or some other breath work modality. Make sure that you're doing something that's going to add some value to what it is that you already existingly offer. Because there's nothing that I would want more than to be a different provider. I want to be a provider all my own. I don't want to be the provider that does the same thing that you know, 50 other providers that took the same course to do. I want to be somebody who can stand out and say, hey, look, I offer this dynamic, wonderful service. Is this something that you're interested in as a patient? Or, you know, if you're not, you can go to plain Jane, Susie over there. And I think love you, Susie. Actually, oh, Susie, Susan from last week. I wonder how she's doing with her scope of practice questions. Hopefully we answered everything. Um, but anyways, I think, you know, especially with how a lot of courses now are virtual, which means you typically get access to the recordings, at least for a little bit, right? If not lifetime. So like you invested, whatever it is, let's just call it 3000 into this Mayo course, like literally use every little last penny until you soaked in all of that information. It is a lot. If you think listening to it once is good enough, you are so wrong. I mean, what I would have done to have my intro courses recorded so I could have gone back and listened, like I thought my hand was going to fall off from all the notes that I was taking, go back and listen to them. Take notes again. The more you hear it, the more it will sink in. Um, And, you know, sit with that information for a little bit. 
like we talked about in the beginning, dive in with some patients, see how those tools and that knowledge you learned from that intro course helps you. If you still feel stuck, sure, maybe a year down the line or whatever, if you feel that you absolutely have to take another intro course, do it. But don't do it back to back because a lot of it's going to be repetition to some degree. So rewatch, reread your notes, write your notes out again, break it down that way. Do your research, figure out what modality you know, you want to dive into. And we do talk about modalities in our team mile. We don't go obviously into an extensive length, but we talk about the modalities that we each do, at least giving you a little bit of knowledge. And if something catches your attention, all right, make that your goal. In the next six months, I'm going to boom, I'm going to take that modality. And now I'm going to have this even more specialty added to my practice. Um, so yeah, big believer in that because we see it all the time. We have people saying, you know, I've taken three intro courses and we've done it. Look, so we're not judging. We've done it. We get it. But yes. I wish I had somebody telling me what we're telling you right now, because I could have invested my money in other things. You know what I mean? So and like Chris said, everybody's a great speaker. It's not about the class being bad. It's just, you already took one. So <laughs> why are you going to take it again? You know, are you going to take uh, anatomy and physiology one and two again? I certainly am not. I hated that class. Um, <laughs> Definitely not. I, I would never like, do hygiene school again. I'm like, why, why yeah. would you do that? It's yeah. not necessary. You have all that stuff. Sure. We go back and we review our anatomy and physiology that we learned and we use it in our practice, but I'm not going to go pay for another credit of it or two or whatever. So that's our rant on that. Thanks for attending our TED talk. Awesome. Okay. Well, we hope that you new myofunctional therapists out there, even existing myofunctional therapists listening. I hope that these tips did help you next week on uh, Myo Monday. We are going to talk to you about our, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm missing the word. In-office screener. Thank you. Screener. That's what I was looking for. Our in-office screener that we worked on together to bring to you um, a simple way to know, does this patient need to be referred to myofunctional therapy or do they not? Yay. I can't wait to talk about it. All right, everybody have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.